Have you ever needed a modal or pop-up to pop up on your site? Well, we now have a native HTML element that we can use. It can do a lot of really cool things right out of the box. So let's go and see how it works. Hello there, my front end friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, we learn about how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And in this one, we're going to be looking at pop-ups and modals and those things that appear on the screen and sort of black out the background a little bit. But just before we jump into it, I just want to say that the browser support for this isn't perfect yet, but it is just around the corner. But in the description down below, I have put a link to something that you might want to use right now until browser support gets there, or there is also a polyfill once again linked in the description. And so yeah, let's go and dive in and see how we can do this. All right, so first things first, I have done a little bit of work, but most of this is just setting stuff up so we have something on the page to start with. Uh, so I have a button here, which is my button for open modal, and I have a button here for cl close button for my close modal, and I have a div here of modal. And that div is right down here. And we're just going to add a little, little, little bit of like nothing styling to it. Uh, you're going to see it's barely going to change a max width, some spacing stuff on it. But we're starting with pretty much nothing. And what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take this div that we have right here. And I'm going to switch this from being a div to a dialogue. And in doing that, you're going to notice it's going to disappear off the screen. What happened to it? Well, it's a dialogue that is not currently open. Now to have an open dialog, you just need to have the opened attribute on there and then it will appear on the page and you can see things look a little bit different because it does come with some default styling on it. Um, and you could, I guess, toggle this open attribute on your own, but you don't want to do that. As I said off the start, there's a lot of baked in functionality with this HTML element and it's not meant to be, this attribute's not meant to be toggled. And if you did toggle it, it could actually cause some problems. So we're not going to toggle it manually. We're going to use a couple of other ways of doing it. So let's go over into my JavaScript and we're going to select the open buttons. So we can do a const of open modal is equal to document dot query selector. And my query selector in this case is going to be my open uh, button. Uh, a data attribute would probably be the better choice here. But again, I'm just throwing together a quick demo for this. And let's get our close button here while, we, while we're at it. So this will be my uh, close. This will be close. And we need one more thing, which is the modal itself. So we're going to do a const of modal is equal to, and we'll just copy this. And that will be my dot modal. Because if you remember, I did put the, uh, I have a class of modal on here. I have an ID. Could have selected it either way. So whatever works for you. Uh, but we want to have all three of those elements available to us. And so how can we get this to work? Well, it's surprisingly easy. <laughs> and the nice thing with it is it comes with so much out of the box. So I'm going to do my open modal. And we'll add event listener for listener. We'll listen for a click. And when somebody clicks, we want to do something. So we'll throw an arrow function in right here. And in that arrow function, we're going to choose the modal. And there's two different options we have here. One of them is show. And there is another method called show modal. And so we're going to start with show and see what the difference is. So if I take that and I click, it shows. It's right there. Cool. Um, except, I mean, this page is still here. It's not, it's not really a modal. It just sort of showed up on my page. Hmm. Um, and I'm sure there'll be use cases for using it this way. But as because this isn't technically a modal, it's a dialogue. But the dialogue comes with a built-in modal, which is if you do show modal instead. And if we use the show modal, that's going to refresh the page. And we'll click open modal. And look at that. It came automatically opened in front of everything. I can't actually select anything here. And you'll notice it's actually lightly grayed out the background. And that background can easily be customized. We're going to look at that soon too. But we, we, we can't select anything here. This is what's now in focus. And obviously, we want to be able to, to close my modal. Really interesting, though, I haven't programmed this functionality in yet. But if I just push escape on my keyboard, it closes. That works out of the box. No effort to be done on that, which is really cool. Again, it's nice when we have HTML elements where all this functionality is there, so we don't have to worry about it. But I do think it makes sense to be able to close the modal very easily. So here we can do a close modal and click. And instead of a show, what do you think we need to write? Super easy. We just write close. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you can't get much easier than that. So we can come here and click open. It opens and click close and it closes. 
It's fabulous. <laughs> um, and interestingly, there is another way that we can actually close these, which is if we have a form that is inside of our dialogue. And so I have a form that I've already put together here. And we're going to bring this in. We're going to open that. And I wouldn't necessarily do it for, for this idea of your name. Your, but maybe it's like this is like update your preferences. You click the update button and then a modal pops up. And then inside there it says like you, you, know, you choose your, you know, what is your favorite color. You choose your new color. You hit save. And as soon as you hit save or submit, it just closes it because you don't need it open anymore. Uh, but here you can see if I put in a name and I won't put an email address, but we'll just hit submit form and it closes. Wait, why did it close? It's because on the form, it has a method of dialogue. And that's important because if I take that method off and we try that again and we come here and I hit submit form, it's not found, <laughs> uh, right? Just because of the way I have this set up right now. So um, yeah, we just want to make sure if you want it to close the modal, you need to have the method of dialogue on there and then it will close by itself. And by default right now, I don't have a lot of content on my screen, but it is position fixed. So it won't disable scrolling and there's ways that you could listen for if the open attributes there or not. And I'm not going to get into that in this one because I think this out of the box works really well, but we will look at customizing that background a little bit. And there are a few gotchas, even with the styling in here that I definitely want to look at because there's a few things that are not ideal in my opinion. So we're going to look at how we can fix those. But first let's start with styling this, this backdrop area here. So luckily it's really easy to do. We can just choose our modal and there is a backdrop pseudo element that we can use backdrop. And we can come in here and let's just put background is purple. That's it. <laughs> There's the purple background. You can open it and close it. And well, that doesn't look good. So you just come in, throw an opacity on it. Opacity 0.2. And now you have an opacity of 0.2 on there. And of course you could do an RGBA or whatever instead here or an HSL value and do that. Or you could even come in with a really fancy one. We'll do a background of linear gradient and we could do 45 degrees, red, blue. And then we could do our opacity here as well because I guess that would make more sense. Uh, and you know, there you go. You get a nice little gradient that can come along with it and super easy, super customizable and it just works. And you could actually modify a bit more with it but I think for the most part, uh, you're probably just going to do something like uh, RGB 000.3 or something like that um, just to make it maybe a little bit darker because the default's not quite dark enough in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I think that's looking really good. And one of the things I did from the beginning is I brought this max width um, on here and let's actually comment these out and see what happens where my modal's padding actually is decent, but look how wide it is. And so if we come into my modal and right here, and let's just come in this first one, I'm gonna write lorem 20, just a 29. We got a whole bunch of extra lorem epsom coming in there now. And what's gonna happen now is when I open it, it, it's going edge to edge because there's lots of content that's in here. And by default, it's going to shrink to fit the content if the content is short. So if you just have a few short lines, it's gonna match the width of that content. But as soon as you have a lot of content in there, by default, it's it's going out really wide. So throwing a max width on there could definitely be a nice idea just to sort of constrain things a little bit more. Uh, so that's definitely one thing I would do. Uh, the other thing is it does by default come in with this black border. So you may or may not want that. But again, it's easy enough to change. You could just come in here and say that we have a border of zero and a box shadow of 001M and RGB. 000 over 0.3 or something so you get a, a little bit of a drop shadow uh, or whatever it is you want but just to say that you know there is that the width to me is the bigger issue and then of course there's the border that is there by default but you can do what you want with that border and a, as a reminder off the top i've put a link to the polyfill as well as an accessibility friendly a modal that is well supported in browsers. So that is down below. And if you're curious about other HTML elements and stuff that are a little bit more obscure, but that actually have very good browser support that you might want to be using in your site, there is a video that I put together that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I want to say a very big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim for being my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.